G'day, Michael here. Um, this video is about me having gotten RD Works 8 running on, well, in a Linux environment, running under, it's not an emulator, it's a compatibility layer, and it's called Wine. Wine comes from a recursive acronym. Wine is not emulator. So, hidden in its name is its meaning. Um, all right, now, why the hell would you bother doing this? Is, is it something that, you know, just a crazy guy in a, in, a, in a workshop somewhere will do? Or is there actually some merit to it? Well, actually, there's buckets, lots of reason, lots of good reason for it. Um, for a start, with uh, the commercial environments, they upgrade and abandon things along the way. Now, uh, say, if your robotics software, which is RD Works as a robotics interface, um, a lot of those sorts of interfaces tend to be written for a given version of, say, Windows. Uh, it seems to work really well as an XP environment. Um, but there's a potential that down the track, Windows would roll on and move on to bigger and better things. But your robotics software, you may not, the vendor might, name, bleh, the vendor may no longer exist, and you may need to upgrade to this latest Windows or whatever, so you're stuck. Or you use an old Windows environment, but then you can't have it open on the internet and do you know, any internet work because you can't upgrade the security on it. Now Windows XP has actually hit that point where it's abandoned, um, so you can't really defend it against the outside world, and too bad if it doesn't support your software. Well, Wine allows you, Wine on Linux allows you to set an environment just for that package. So RD Works, I set a Windows XP-ish environment with the various drivers that it needs specifically for that job. And if I was to install some other Windows software, I could install it to say a Windows 7 level or a Windows 95 level or even Windows 3.1 level. And each different program has its own little sort of, uh, they call it a prefix. Um, uh, so there's kind of a package that it fits into, set up specifically for it. And it's each individual installation, whatever program you've installed, it's set up for its own little whatever it needs, rather than having like an environment, the whole environment rolls on like Windows. Okay, so, but it also lets you have the up-to-date, continuously upgrading, etc., modernizing system that Linux is. So you've got the best of both worlds. You've got all the latest security patches, yada, yada, all the newest software, but your program has got its own little isolated world. There's also nowhere for a Windows virus to live in a Wine you know, package. Um, because it isn't a full Windows system, there's no, there's none of the system to run in. So the viruses, Windows viruses can't run in Wine, so you're virus free. Another reason is Wine runs very, very close to native in, in uh, Linux, because it's basically just another patch of, of libraries, another bundle of libraries, which is the same as KDE or GNOME, whatever. So it's pretty much running full speed. Um, yeah, so that's, that's one lot of advantages. The other lot of advantages, uh, Linux intrinsically, Windows, for argument's sake, has a lot of commercial following, a lot of commercial support. Linux is not so strong in the commercial support, but it's massively well supported. Well, it supports or it's supported by open source software and free software. So if I want to install some software, for argument's sake, on a Linux environment, I'll just do exactly that. I'll zoom in. Zoom, zoom. I'll launch Google. That's all. Excuse me. On, right. Fairly clear. Now this is a, a package called Synaptic. What it allows us to do is search for software and install it. It's quite a nice graphical interface. It's a little bit, I'm going to say, for some people maybe a bit too thorough, but for me it's really great because you can search anything. Like if I want to search for argument's sake, Nikon, which is a brand name of a camera, right? These are, what's that about, about 10 packages here that have something specific to do with Nikon. Um, test disk. That's a tool for recovering, um, you know, an SD card that you've deleted all the files off, recovering all that, um, all the files off it. Now, uh, DNF is for getting data out of NEF files, which is a proprietary Nikon files. So I'll just install those packages. It's going to let me know that what it has to do. 
I'm going to say yeah. It's downloading those packages. It's installing it. That's been done. Okay, so let's do something else. I don't know. 3D. 3D. Too much result. Okay, how about um, Blender? Okay, so I can click on Blender and it's going to install a whole lot of other bits and bobs. Go. Apply. It's going to download and install that. Anyhow, while that's happening, I'm going to switch to another desktop. I've got Inkscape running. I don't need that. Inkscape's a good package for this laser work. Um, I'll run RD Works. Okay. Now RD Works works absolutely perfectly. Let's just create something to do. A little circle. Maybe an array of... Let's click on that again. An array of, say, 5 by 5 I mean, it's just a do-nothing job. I suppose I better spin up the laser. Okay, see both items. A bit cluttered here. Better. That's doing his little dance, booting up, homing. Okay. So, do the virtual array. Let's just happen. Oh no, let's start. And there you have it, it's working quite well. And all the tests I've done so far, it's worked absolutely perfectly. And the RD works is running just beautifully smooth in the computer. Like, yeah. What else is it to say? Anyway, I guess that's the video for now. That's finished. Um, yeah, I hope that's of interest to you. Um, subscribe, like, like anything, um, leave a comment, ask a question. Uh, this video is not for the purpose of showing you how to install Wine, um, but when I've got the uh, installation of RD Works sorted and solid, so I've nailed it down to like four or five procedures. I'll make a video specific to that. Okay, bye for now.